in whatever capacity it is that we need this data, but so that it's also usable for everybody else in the community, whether they're biologists, whether they're geologists, whether they're legislators, whether they're educators. It's our job as a community to make it right, to make it usable and ac as accurate as possible. So it's not one organization, it's not one person, it's not one uh, scientific entity, it's everybody, it's the greater community. And if we don't start working on that and start playing fairly, it doesn't have to be fair, just you know, playing politely, like, like good kids, and, and actually sharing that data the way we need to, it, it's what's the point of having it available? All right, if I can ask you to hold that question, we'll get back to that particular comment you made now, just after this question. So, I think it should be. oh, okay, sorry. And I just want to share about our experience in this data quality, because in the portal, if you remember, we have these uh, two types of validation. First validation is the automated validation. We, so the, the portal check the taxonomy of the species, if it exists first, and then the, the geographic location, if it's in Madagascar. And the second one is the expert validation, because it's not enough. So the expert, we are now in the process of uh, doing the expert validation, but we, what we do is, uh, to, it's a meeting, sorry Tom, but it's a meeting with, uh, with experts, and they are not, uh, sitting in the table and look at the occurrences. So it's, it's per taxa group. First we work on, on pre-met, and the last uh, two weeks uh, we work on uh, mammals, uh, small mammals and birds at the same time. And uh, we plan for next week on plants. So the idea is to, to teach those guys on how to check double check the occurrence data on the portal online and what tools they need for that. Like, uh, I don't know, parks, location or uh, names of uh, places and, uh, and so on. So, so, so there is a, 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 a double checking of data. So, it's so your experts are improving the data rather yeah. than synthesizing some new product? No, 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 it's, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Well. Okay, the, the case of the institution of uh, DMB is uh, maybe an ideal one, but uh, let's say countries, uh, many institutions don't have that uh, capacity. I think that GBIF uh, is uh, succeed, completely succeed in mobilizing a mass of data, over 400 million of data. Maybe it is the first step of GBIF objectives, having, let's say, a, a huge uh, quantity of data. GBIF now must move into, let's say, making, serving that data uh, in order to, to make it useful, to fit in decision making. And that includes, as you said, uh, um, town, that includes, let's say, a data quality. Uh, so, so GBIF must now worry about, uh, let's say, uh, data curation to make it uh, very, uh, let's say, suitable for use uh, by the large audience of uh, scientists uh, and uh, other users. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I just want to move the conversation forward now. So we, we said we've got bad data. And we said well, poor quality, and we've got the reasons why, and we looked at the impact of poor quality. Can I flip that over and ask you, do you have good quality data? Given the concept, do you have good quality data? Sorry. Madagascar? Yes. Who's got good quality data? Kenya, South Africa, University, Kansas, Korea. Now, I want you just to think about it. Give me the definition as to why you say it's good. Just, just to back it up so that you could understand, have a common understanding as a community around the table. When you're talking about good quality data, what makes your data good quality? What makes your data good quality? Why do you say it's good quality? It's true. 
if it's been geo-referenced to a fine scale. So understanding all the, the, the technical discussions you have and the concepts and the definitions you know, of precision, and so within that framework you're saying, it's, if it's geo-referenced. But the coordinates can be bad also. Hmm? The coordinates can be the wrong, wrong ones. So. But yeah, I fully understand, but I would have, the question is what gives you the confidence? I'm asking, I understand this, but I'm asking what gives you the confidence that your data is correct or accurate? It's the, about the accuracy and precision. So you have confidence in the, the data that's got good accuracy, good precision, repeatability? Yeah. 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 So that's uh, the, the good uh, stable taxonomy? defined, well defined, and uh, again, uh, the distribution of the species. So you have data with good stable taxonomy and it's well defined and the distribution information is available? Um, uh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. Quality data, we have clear indicators to keep track in the trends of a certain uh, a certain quality or quantity or something. So, in your institution, you have clear indicators of that track yeah. the quality and the quantity of data. Uh, because it's collected using standard, near, clear, known methods, mm -hmm. captured and verified after capture, and it also serves the purpose for which we intended to use it. Bypass. Bypass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have good quality data? Clear. Uh, why do you, and why do you have? Uh, we have good quality data and bad quality data. I'm just, we're just interested in why, why do you have good quality? What makes you believe it's good quality? Uh, first, uh, the quality is related uh, to the data generation, mm -hmm. and also the good quality or, or lack of qualities is not. Uh, is, is, a, is a matter of not reviewing the process. See, the, the CRIA, the, the thing is, what, what's the difference of uh, CRIA? What we do, we just integrate any type of data and make it available independent of a quality assessment. But like we provide like the means every night, we, we just harvest all the data that was integrated in the network and then we do like uh, the filters to, we, we, do, we do the analysis to make an assessment of the quality of the data, and we flag the data with the poor quality, just like for locality or, you know, uh, misspelling, taxonomy, and uh, so we have like a, uh, data analysis reports uh, every night that are made available in the system not and they're available not only to the data provider to the creator but also to the data user and so in the CRIA uh, uh, data infrastructure we have like uh, data and also we have like the reports indicating what's the quality of the data so like the user can select okay i want like this record or i do not want this record so i think uh, we have like all types of the data, but I think uh, important uh, in the CRIA system is the, is the process that allow like a simple way to the curators to improve the data quality. And out of that process, you've got a, a, a confidence index that the user can reflect on before accept, uh, ac accessing the data. Uh, much of our data is is uh, in very good shape and is fit for use for powerful science. Um, but uh, as I indicated in, in my comments, some of the data, just by its very nature, uh, it's very old. It was collected before there were uh, GPS units, before people took lat-long measurements. Um, it's very coarse, and that has to be used with caution. Um, we have uh, expended a fair amount of effort in, in, in continuously reviewing the data, upgrading the fitness for use, upgrading the georeferencing, and trying to establish the uh, limits to which the data uh, can be used, uh, updating the taxonomy. 
but that's a constant effort and I think this is one of the institutional problems that all of us share to a greater or lesser extent is how much effort can uh, uh, staff devote to improving fitness for use of the data as opposed to all of their other tasks they are doing because everyone has multiple uh, 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 tasks. But in general, our data is in, in comparatively uh, fine shape. So very briefly, what gives you that confidence? And where do you get the confidence from? Uh, <laughs> well, either the curators are lying to me, <laughs> or uh, no, I, I think the confidence is from the um, amount of use that the data gets. Uh, in uh, scientific research resulting in publications, both digital as well as in print. Uh, the amount of support we get from the National Science Foundation, where the results published from our collections and the data from our collections in and of themselves are open to peer review by uh, the toughest reviewing community, among the toughest reviewing community in the world. So, and every time we get a grant, that tells us that they trust our data. When other people are using our data to a great extent, that's an indication of trust. That's one of these blue chip values. You must establish the trust in your data. So, when we get grants, when other people external to our organization download our data and use it for research, either through GBIF or directly from us, uh, when others collaborate with us and partner with us in projects that involve our data, these are all testimonies to the trust and the, and the quality of our data. Thank you. Important issue. The external validation of, of, of use of the data. Right. Tom? Do you want to add Sorry, what gives you the confidence that the data is good? So remember, I'm going to put, put on my user hat. Yeah. I have no confidence which is to say I know that all data have garbage in them, all data have error in them, so I need to design my use of the data either to filter the data that don't meet my quality standards for that particular use, or I need to um, adjust my methodology such that it takes the poor quality into account. It might be uh, accommodating the possibility of misidentifications. It might be accommodating the possibility of lack of precision or even bias present in georeferences. But I have to build my methodologies specifically to take into account that there is bad quality data. There is garbage amongst the signal. Thanks. So, is there anything else? Anybody want to add? So what we're seeing is quite a, a range of experiences in what gives people the confidence to say, my data is fit for purpose, can be used for a particular reason. It's not the same across the board. And I think we need to acknowledge that. Um, my lovely assistant <laughs> has, has just written up these, these, these points. Let me just put it down. So we're talking external validation on use of use of data, support from the National Service Foundation, the amount of scientific research, good processes in place, data reports indicating quality for user and data provider. Uh, conforming to standards, okay, uh, clear indicators to keep track of trends, serve the purpose for which has been collected, correctly geo-referenced to scale. Um, and then Towns one about um, having, I suppose the issue there for, for, for me, is what I'm hearing is that you at least have the confidence that you know what the potential shortcomings of the data is that you could then make the necessary. Examine each data set. Yeah. It's, it's, the onus is on the user, yeah. not on the provider. Yeah. We should never, ever trust that the provider cleans these data. Yep. We should rather trust that we checked yep. and made sure that the data were clean enough for our needs. Yeah. All right. But let me add something to that. All right. I think it is a contract. It's not just the user's responsibility. Yes, user beware, absolutely. 
But once the user cleans the data for his or her use and sends back that information to the provider, which I think is part of the contract, then the provider needs to carry out their part of the contract and correct the data. There are apparently a lot of cases uh, that's cited by GBIF where downloading the data reveals lots of errors. The provider is, uh, um, uh, has the database returned, that uh, data set returned to it, uh, to the provider with um, uh, the errors pointing out. And the provider says, sorry, I don't have enough time to fix them. We'll just keep, and they keep serving garbage. So it's a contract between the user and the, and the publisher. Thanks, Chris. All right, then I suppose that we'll get back to the comment that um, Kate made earlier and what Chris is making now. Who is responsible for data quality? You can just, yeah, who's responsible for data quality? We're in this community, who must take responsibility? Data providers and data publishers. Okay. Data providers, data publishers. I think as uh, Tao and uh, Chris has explained, the user also has a responsibility to ensure that we have good quality data. And in most cases, when he or she has done the cleaning, it is often appropriate to give feedback to the provider. Feedback. Any other people that's responsible for data quality? We've got the provider. What did, what did we say? The provider, the user. No. We've got. Yep. Data provider and data publisher. I'll put the headings up here in a minute. And then we've got the user. 